Welcome to another edition of TPA Talks. Today we're joined by Emma McClarkin, the Chief Executive of the British Beer and Pub Association. We hope you enjoy. Well, thank you very much for joining us, Emma. Um, I suppose I'll start by asking the question you must get asked every single day. How can we lower the cost of a pint? Well, the government has an opportunity to do that, of course, when it stands up and the Chancellor makes a speech about the budget um, be, by bringing down beer duty. Um, and we pay a phenomenal amount of, of beer duty. We pay 11 times more than they do in Germany. And even though that they have made some beer freezes, the reality is because of inflation, it is our brewers that are absorbing this, co uh, this cost at this moment in time. If you look at the retail price index for food and drink, it's gone up about 24%, but the price of a pint has only gone up on average by 12%. So those brewers are sucking it up, so to speak, for the time being, but they won't be able to do that for the long term. And everybody wants to make going to the pub for a pint an affordable experience for everybody. And I really hope that they take the opportunity this autumn to reduce beer duty. And in terms of the review that you said, you know, these measures that are coming into effect in August, how will they impact the pub industry? Well, this is a, a good thing for the industry as a whole. The alcohol duty review is recognising lower ABV products like beer um, and, and then scaling up the duty from there. So it is a positive and more fair approach to this. Um, what we're also seeing is a, a draft duty, which is a discount on beer in pubs. Hopefully that will encourage more people to go out and have a pint in their local, but it will be more expensive in the supermarket. The impact of that unfortunately means that our brewers will see from August the 1st a 225 million increase in taxes, which sounds different from the, the freezing that we're hearing on the pump, but the reality is the overall brewing sector will still pay for that. So we still need to see this beer duty come down, you know, the one of the highest in Europe, and we need to address that to support our British brewers. So, you know, beer and pubs, one of our most important sectors, they support so many jobs and communities. What are the key challenges to the sector at the moment in Britain? Well, everybody knows what the sector went through during the pandemic. It was a, a really difficult time for us. We were closed um, the first and we were the last to open. And it has been extraordinarily difficult. And we broke habits during that period of time. And it's been very difficult for our businesses to come back. But come back, they are. And we still want them to be at the heart of their communities. So we really need to find ways to support the industry. But cost inflation is the big one right now. That twinned with the energy prices that are going through the roof. It is a very, very dangerous combination. Um, now we have seen an acceleration of business failure and, and pubs closing their doors for good. We're desperate to avoid that. So we really need the government to come up with initiatives that will help support us reduce that tax burden as we're going through this period of recovery. And what do we mean by that? Obviously, beer duty is one of those, but business rates is another one. It is killing the high street. We desperately need to see business rates reform so that it's fair. Um, pubs pay five times versus their turnover, disproportionate amount of rates. Um, uh, and so we need to rebalance that going forwards to support that and the regeneration of high streets go up and down this country. But we also need to look at VAT, for example. You know, we pay VAT on food and drink but they don't in the supermarkets. And that really is a huge cost to businesses. When they actually gave us the, the relief and support on VAT during the pandemic, we saw a huge boom of people coming back in, feeling that they can afford to have a night out at their local pub, spending some of their hard-earned money with us. Um, and it would be a real boon and an incentive for us if we could see something on, on the VAT as well. Um, but there's many things that are impacting us. We can, I could go on about skills, access to the right labour. You know, we really need to be working on how we can really um, fire on the economy by supporting hospitality because we are operational everywhere we're hopefully still in every town village and city center and we really can provide those jobs very very quickly so we just need that support from the government if they give us that investment we can continue investing in people and places. Well, you touched on there about, about VAT and, uh, for, say, the hospitality centre. Um, at the same time, you know, we're seeing in some places tourism taxes being introduced. There's one I think we should be introduced in Manchester and it's on the way in Wales. What's the kind of impact that would have on the pub sector and jobs uh, in, in the pub sector? Well, having just described how difficult the situation is uh, for the beer in the pub sector, you can imagine that any 
extra taxes on top is not very helpful right now. And that additional tax may put somebody off coming in and boosting that tourism in any location. And we desperately need to see that. And, and not forgetting that our, our beer and pubs are a big part of the British tourism offer. Um, we're the top three things to do when you come to the United Kingdom. Over 50% of the people here that visit um, want to come to stay in, in a British pub and have a, a pint and their fish and chips. And why wouldn't they? Because we're very proud of it too. But we need to be given that kind of positioning to say we are important, we are part of that offer, and we need to support these businesses in bringing more tourists in. The number of pubs has been sort of slowly declining for, for quite a few decades, but it seems to have really sped up the sort of rate of decline. Um, do you think, you know, in order for us to flatten that rate of closure, is that, you know, that's business rate reform, that's VAT reform, are these things which we need to do in order to make sure that our, you know, that we don't end up in a situation where certain communities don't have their local pub? There has been a decline um, since the millennium, and but it was beginning to stabilise, um, ironically, just ahead of that pandemic. But of course, the closure has been very, very problematic. And with all the cost pressures that we're seeing um, post-COVID, it is now the hardest time and the hardest environment to operate in. So we really need to support these businesses. And my job, first and foremost, is to make sure that we can create sustainable businesses in communities up and down this country so that the heart of those communities, which is the pub, uh, that place where we meet that has the economic boost but also adds that social value, can remain in situ. And we desperately need to find ways to make that happen. And that is reducing the cost burden. Uh, bringing down inflation is a, a big part of that, but the government can do something quicker and faster in helping bring those costs down by reducing taxation. It's also looking at other things, you know, easing, uh, easements that they gave, allowing people to use the pavement licensing. The customers loved it and they really enjoy that. So let's make it easy for businesses to expand their footprint. Let's also get it planning up to speed so that planning isn't holding back investment for our pubs as well. Um, this is something also that's been a real problem for us since the pandemic. It's a huge backlog in planning applications. So there are lots of things that they can do to help us. Um, and also if they opened up uh, the occupation shortage list, as they have done in other sectors we're hearing today for builders, carpenters and fishermen, it would be great to see hospitality added to that list to give us more labour, to help us really, you know, take advantage of the demand that is there, service it well, give people that quality experience because everybody is very, very, very cautious about how they're spending their money. They really want value for money and they want a quality night out. So we really need to help deliver this in the round and the government has a lot of power in its hands to help us unlock that potential. How is the pub sector uh, handling sort of uh, getting people back in terms of, you know, people during the pandemic got used to drinking at home, perhaps doing a bit more cooking or, or getting, you know, some sort of posh evening meal deals in and that sort of thing. Um, you know, is there, is it, is it, how, how easy or otherwise is it in terms of getting those people to come back to the pub now that they've got used to maybe having something of the pub experience in terms of having food and drink at home? Yeah, well, since uh, since COVID and the pub closures, we haven't won back the full demographic of people to the pub. It's the honest truth. Uh, and we're doing everything that we can to, to persuade them to come back in. It is a very difficult economic period of time, but people just broke that habit. You know, we saw people not coming back to the office. So those city centre pubs took longer to recover because people weren't coming into those city centres, maybe town centres, uh, and they changed their, their habits. So we really need to think about what the consumer wants today, how we can service it, but also encouraging more people to have that love affair that they've had with the Great British Pub for centuries, but to come and reignite it. Um, and, you know, in terms of, you know, pub numbers, not just how can we kind of flatten the rate of, of you know, relative sort of decline in the pub numbers, but how do we get more people into opening new pubs and becoming landlords and, and, and such? I think we need to give this huge injection to the sector of confidence to say, come and check us out. We have phenomenal opportunity if you're an entrepreneur to come and run your own pub. You know, it's a very easy entry um, industry to come to. And also, if you want to come and work in the industry, you can excel. You can start as a glass collector and you can end up as a chief exec. I have examples of that in my industry. That's what's so brilliant about the, the beer in the pub sector. Um, but we really need to have this confidence and the government can help us build up that confidence, confidence as well. We're doing it from our side. We're doing a huge campaign called Hospitality Rising about 
all the proactive, positive things that we're doing in the industry and wanting to get people to come and help us with and rebuild. Um, and we really need to just keep talking about the great examples of success. We have them in the industry. Um, it, is, it is a very tough environment, but some of them are doing really, really well. And we need to also be very proud of what we do. And I think hospitality in the round is undersung and we need to do more to champion that. And we need to do more to champion our great beer and pubs. And moving slightly more on to sort of the brewery side of things, um, one of the things we've all noticed over the last few years is the kind of craft beer revolution. Do you think the government has helped the craft beer revolution along or has the craft beer revolution sort of happened in spite of government? Uh, well, it, it's been a, an explosion that happened about 10 years ago and it's uh, phenomenal. It's great for beer drinkers. Uh, and even if you're beer curious, I would say go out and try something. There's some phenomenal beers out there, enormous range. It is very difficult for some of those mid-sized businesses out there right now. They are really, really feeling all these pressures. It is in every single part of our supply chain. If you look at the raw materials, for example, barley's gone up over 50% alone uh, and a key ingredient in the making of beer. And we can go across the board with many other uh, raw materials as well. It is getting harder and harder for them to become profitable. And without businesses becoming profitable, they won't be able to survive. And this is what we need to do for our brewers as well. And the mid-sized ones particularly are feeling that pinch. So looking at the duty again is going to be a massive help to those. Um, and they found new markets. So during the pandemic, when the taps were turned off, they all turned to online package sales. And the package sale beer um, from August will have never been so expensive as it has in the last 10 years. So, you know, this is a huge increase that we're seeing that will really put a squeeze on those craft brewers. And we desperately want them because we want that range, the uh, innovation that comes with it as well. Um, and it is one of our greatest exports. So we need to think about how we're nurturing um, those brewers as they're coming up through the ranks. And, you know, in terms of the new the new measures that are coming in, in August, how will how will that impact the smaller brewers at the smaller end of the scale? Um, well, the small brewers, uh, there will be a, a new small producers relief that's being introduced. And we're hoping that this will inspire more people to grow their businesses. There was a huge cliff once you dropped off of the small brewers relief as it previously was. So we're hoping now that this will support more brewers all the way through that curve. Those mid-sized ones I'm saying all the way through the curve up to the bigger breweries um, to encourage them to keep growing and to, to make sure that they're getting the support that they need. So we hope that this will have a positive impact. So a uh, big BBPA campaign is Long Live the Local. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, we're really proud of Long Live the Local. It's won um, many awards for uh, its marketing and reach out and its success, um, but it's had a huge impact also in Westminster. It's one of the biggest consumer campaigns that they have ever seen, um, and it is delivering results for us in making sure that our voice is heard for our brewers and our pubs, that people really care about their local. They really want the politicians to take actions that support those businesses, to help them remain sustainable for the long term so that they can continue being the beating heart of uh, their community. And it is something that is live, it's running now. And we need more and more people to sign up to that petition that goes in to number 10, but also emails the MPs in the House to let them know what we really want, that we want lower beer duty, that we want business rates, and we need them to tackle VAT on food and drink in our venues. And it's really important. And we're really grateful that we can get the support from the great British people behind us. So go and check us out. <laughs> it's uh, longlivethelocal.pub and uh, add your support to ours. Uh, so, so Emma, what sort of brought you into the BBPA? You know, was it something from your sort of career background, whether it's, you know, your time in the European Parliament or is it sort of lifelong love of pubs and beer? Um, it's true. My family um, are very much uh, pub lovers and beer lovers. And my, uh, my father has uh, educated me well in that regard. And the pub has always been at the center of it. My family go to the pub on Christmas Day. We go on St. Patrick's Day and we, we all come together to celebrate any event, life, death, birthdays, everything around the pub. So it's always been a really central part of my life. Um, but when I was a member of the European Parliament, I continued that uh, my love affair with uh, the Great British Beer and our pubs uh, by being the vice president of the beer club. And through that, I was known to be somebody that would talk to the alcohol industry and that would also support hospitality. And one of the first pieces of legislation I worked on was food and drink labeling. And so it was it was really a, a good relationship that was built. So when my time as a, a politician came to an end and they approached me about this job, it seemed to be a natural fit to me. I'm very, very lucky in my career 
that I've been able to work in things that I'm truly passionate about, be it rugby or politics, and now food and drink with beer and pubs. It, it is, it is a, something that I really enjoy. And um, I'm, I'm very, very honoured to be in this role fighting for such a sector. Uh, you talked before about um, the impact that, that working from home has had, particularly on sort of town centre pubs. Can you speak a little bit more about that? And perhaps does it almost have a positive impact on, say, the out of town pubs? Is there sort of a trade off there? I mean, we, we have a range of venues in all parts of the, the country. Um, and that is one of the benefits of what we do, which is why I say, you know, we're well connected. If you're looking at levelling up, we're already a network on the ground. You've just got to inject some investment to us and, and off we go. Um, obviously, the, we have a big role to play in the regeneration of high streets in our towns and also in our city centres. We're a big part of uh, the support network there and the offer that we have on, on the high street is really important. If, you, if you're a, a business, a small business next to a pub, your footfall will increase with a good pub next door to you. And when that pub closes, that footfall also slows down for your businesses too. And it's that knock on impact that we have all over the country that's so significant. But when it comes to the rural pub, it's had a bit of a, a dicey time because you know during the pandemic, perhaps more locally, when people weren't allowed to go out very far, they were actually seeing a boom through that period of time, people staying more local, reigniting their love affair, as I say, with their local pub um, and understanding the value. They didn't want to lose it. They may have not have been there for many years, but now they understand. But it is difficult in the environment that we're in at the moment. Absolutely. You know, people are also thinking about fuel in their cars and am I going to make that journey? So we have to make it a really good quality offer in those rural locations. Um, but if you think about, I represent the whole of the United Kingdom in Scotland, many of those rural pubs closed. Um, when they introduced zero limits for drink driving. And many of those rural communities now don't have any tourism offer. There's nowhere for the tourists to go to stop for a drink, a meal, a coffee, or even an overnight stay. And it, it's become very, very difficult. So we always have to be aware of how we balance out the support to make sure it gets to our rural communities. Is there, you know, what's the, what is the sort of proliferation of, of low alcohol beers doing for the sector? Is it, is it driving more people who might not have gone to the pub before to, to go to the after work drinks or whatever it may be? Well, we're really proud of the innovation and the, uh, the boosts and investment that we put in to these low and no products. Um, and they're certainly becoming incredibly popular. And it does actually, I think, mean it's more inclusive. That environment is more inclusive if you have low and no offers. And beer is absolutely a leader in category here. You, know, you really don't lose any of the flavor profile now with the low or no pro uh, alcohol products at all. And I would encourage anybody out there to go and try one because there's a fierce competition amongst our brewers to see who can get the most flavor and taste into those zero beers. So it is, it is a phenomenal market out there right now. It's a growth market. It's still only 1% of our sales, but we know that it, there is potential. The market in Spain is over 16% in the non-alcoholic beer market. So this is something that we're aiming to, to get towards. And we need more investment from the government in order to you know, say, well, you know, we, we back you, we see what you're doing. And I think that support for low ABV with the alcohol duty review is, is a good step forward and other ways that we can work together to promote low and no products as something that moderates consumption, um, but also makes sure that we're fully inclusive when we're bringing people together. And in, you talked about the sort of knock on impact of how when a pub closes, it can impact a community. But how does it impact sort of, you know, conservation of buildings with heritage in communities? Well, it, it is so exciting when there's been an empty building in your town centre and then somebody, some brave entrepreneurial pioneer comes in and resuscitates it and turns it into a f phenomenal pub uh, or venue. And this is what um, members of mine do all the time. Weatherspoons is well known for taking on phenomenally large venues, be they old banks, old corn halls even in, in some of our town centres, massive footprints. They go in there, they take on the challenge and they keep them preserved. They preserve the heritage. They then populate it with a new business that it boosts the local economy and it becomes a real highlight um, up and down the country and lounges is doing a phenomenal job doing that right now and with more retailers closing their doors actually it's hospitality that's filling that void it's you know opening up these new pubs and phenomenal beautiful buildings that we have um, within our, our estates um, really really stunning 
it comes with their own challenges. It will be very difficult in some of these heritage buildings to meet some of the new regulations or propositions that are coming through, particularly when it comes to making energy um, and EPC, for example, reaching those levels in a, in a heritage building is not easy. Um, so it will be interesting to see how we can also get the support to continue resuscitating and breathing new life into these buildings because it, it, we all benefit from that. It preserves that, that heritage it also resuscitates the high street and it brings the community back in together. Uh, ahead of the uh, autumn statement, you know, as like you said, there's, there's an opportunity for the Chancellor to make life easier for our, our brewers and our pubs. If you could have one key ask that would really make a difference to the sector, what would you like to see the Chancellor announcing on Budget Day? I would like to see the Chancellor stand on his feet and say yet again that the pub is the most treasured asset in our communities and make three major asks of investment to okay. support okay, you that. You can have three, you can have three. <laughs> on <laughs> beer duty, on business rates, and on VAT. Those three things, they really have to come together. They uh, And I'll, I'll take any one of them, but honestly, if you want to really commit to supporting the most treasured asset in our communities, those are the things that we need to see tackled. Thank you very much for joining us. Well, thank you very much to Emma McClarkin uh, for joining us today. If you enjoyed this episode of TPA Talks, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Thank you.